horticulture and various schemes for its growth in Karnataka. We continue our essays on agriculture and allied sectors and in this essay we will take up horticulture sector and the various schemes run by the government for the growth in this sector. The hortical sector has registered a fairly rapid growth in Karnataka. The state government has undertaken several initiatives to boost the growth in the sector. The major initiatives can be listed as seven. Number one, area expansion program. Two, providing micro irrigation. Three, providing assistance to farmers. Four, disease and pest management. 5. Mechanization 6. Post-harvest management and marketing and that is the last one, providing infrastructure facilities. We will be discussing them in great detail one by one. With the successful implementation of these programs, production of horticulture crops has increased over a period of time as we will see in the subsequent slides. Now, this is a table which shows the area under horticultural crops in the state and how it has grown from 2008 to 1989 to 2012 and 13. Nearly at present, nearly 20 lakh hectares of land are under horticultural crops and fruits, coconut, spices are the major ones. So also the vegetables. Cashew flowers and others also are fairly significant horticulture crops in Karnataka. We can see in this table that there is a fairly steady growth from 2008 to 9 to 2012 and 13. It was 18 lakh hectares in 2008 and 9 and it has reached to nearly 20 lakh hectares in 2012 and 13. Let us now find out the area expansion program in this sector. And the area expansion program has been taken up under different schemes. They are National Horticulture Mission, Oil Development Program, Coconut Development Board, and Comprehensive Horticulture Development. The details of these schemes in the implementation we will be discussing as and Let us start with National Horticulture Mission. NHM. In short, the Government of India has sanctioned this scheme for the implementation in Karnataka state in 2005 and 6. It is basically a central sponsors program scheme in which the government provides 100% assistance to the state missions. It started from uh, 10th fire year plan 2005 and 6 uh, and 2006 and 7. In the 11th fire plan onward, that is 2007 to 8, the central government and the state government assistance has been fixed at 85 to 15. That is the ratio 85 from the central government and 15 from the state government. And this scheme now is being implemented in all the 30 districts of our state. The main objective of introducing this scheme was to achieve an all-round development of horticulture by integrating backward and forward linkages. Its approach is end-to-end, -end, that is starting from the production of planting material and finally ending with the value addition and marketing and also export of produce. The major strategies set for the development of horticulture through National Horticulture Mission in this state will have to be stated as enhancing both production and productivity of major horticulture crops, increasing quality of the produce, rejuvenation of the unproductive orchards, rainwater harvesting, organic farming, induction of integrated nutrient management that is INM and also integrated pest management that is IPM in short providing post harvest support improving marketing and enhancing the technical knowledge and skills of farmers extension officials and entrepreneurs 
through variety of hrd programs that is human resource development training programs in 2013-14 more emphasis has been given for plantation of infrastructure protected cultivation component as well as the post harvest management component the progress of the program implementation during 2013-14 under national horticulture mission is given in the form of tables which you can see in the next slides you can see that in this table during financial year 2013-14 the government has launched a new area expansion program rejuvenation of old orchards integrated nutrient pest and disease management and protected cultivation programs in, a, in the next table also same appears to be the case in respect of various programs like integrated post harvest management which includes many sub programs as pack houses primary processing cold storage units etc the possible reason could be the main constraints in not being able to implement to the extent of the target the program had sought to make we will discuss now the various area expansion programs starting with the oil palm development program oil palm development program is a, a joint sponsored program of the government of india and the government of karnataka and the sharing pattern is 75% from the central government and 25% from the state government now main features of this program are the farmers are given input subsidies on per hectare basis and it is for an initial period of 4 years or it also given a planting material then subsidies are also extended for the purchase of harvesting tools drip irrigation and drainage intercropping integrated nutrient management that is inm integrated pest management that is ipm borewell digging water harvesting structures and diesel pump sets farmers are also taken on exposure visits and given a training programs on advanced practices in oil palm cultivation the price of the oil palm fresh fruit bunches are also fixed every month by the state government this is a very unique program and it transparent system and the state government is examining the proposal to announce a minimum support price for oil palm fresh fruit bunches overall the situation in oil palm development is quite encouraging with the better prospects for the crop as the country is importing a huge quantities of edible oil and the prospects of crude palm oil for conversion into boil biofuel are bright the physical and financial achievements of the oil palm development program are listed in this table here during the 11th plan period the target set was as high as 22000 hectares but the, however the achievement have fallen much short it could achieve only about uh, 60% that is about 14000 lakh hectares and uh, in 2012 and 13 is the same case now 2013 14 which is a partial year part of the year the achievement has not been much but the target has been set at a 6500 hectares of land integrated farming in coconut for productivity improvement program the coconut development board is and it provides a 100% financial assistance for the integrated development of coconut industry in the state the activities and the different implementation programs are laying out demonstration of plots and their maintenance distribution of plant protection chemicals organic manures chemical and bio fertilizers for the improvement in the production and the productivity of the coconut production of txt hybrid coconut seedlings providing micro irrigation facility the department of horticulture has been promoting the use of drip irrigation system among the horticultural farms 1991 to 92 
it is a centrally sponsored scheme of micro irrigation and it has been implemented in the state under this scheme subsidy is provided for drip irrigation sprinkler irrigation and drip demonstration for all horticulture crops of course for the coffee tea rubber and oil palm the assistance is available for a maximum area of 5 hectares per beneficiary family for both drip and sprinkler irrigation schemes providing assistance to farmers under this program assistance to farmers is given in the form of training and supply of planting materials there is a newly developed technologies and the improvement hybrid varieties of high link potential crop and they are disseminated to farmers through various media and it will enable them to adopt it and then get a better returns training programs are also conducted by the horticulture department on the latest available technologies in the horticulture since 2005 and 6 training to farmer scheme is being implemented under jilla panchayat on different technological aspects farmers both women and men are trained in the preservation of fruits vegetables and mushroom cultivation there is a horticultural extension program there are 10 horticultural training centers in the state which were working since 1950 10 months of practical training programs are being conducted to the farmers children with the modern technologies that have been introduced in the horticulture field it will improve their own land and productivity of horticulture crops around 300 participants are trained every year training centers have hostel facilities and it has been made mandatory for the student to stay in the hostels then there is a production and supply of planting materials a great emphasis has been given for the mass multiplication of horticultural seed and planting materials through as many as 410 horticultural farms and nurseries uh, which are spread across the state the supply is made to the farmers at affordable rates the disease and pest management the department conducts various plant production programs and it provides a bio pesticides botanicals chemicals hormone traps and the control the pests and diseases of horticulture crops in addition pest surveillance is also undertaken in different districts to predict the outbreak of uh, pests and diseases to create a awareness in the management of pests and diseases like uh, europhrodite black headed caterpillar etc strengthening of the departmental laboratories is another program and it is under rashtriya krishi vikas yojana scheme there is also comprehensive horticulture development program that is in order to achieve a comprehensive development in the horticulture sector of the state the chief minister announced a in his budget speech of 2012 and 13 major scheme for the integrated comprehensive development of horticulture the outlay was as much as 305 crore rupees the component of promotion of crop clusters is being implemented in all 176 talukas of 30 districts in the state there is one special program of wine policy and establishment of karnataka grape wine board and this promotes wine varieties of grapes and also it encourages a wine industry in the state policy has been enforced since 2007 The Karnataka Grape Wine Board has been set up for implementing the programs under the wine policy Mango Development Board Mango Development Board was established in 2010 to promote and streamline the production processing marketing and export of mangoes in the state the board that is the Mango Development Board is looking after the activities taken in the mango resource center in kolar and chikkabellapur let us see what are the programs coming under post harvest management and marketing and providing infrastructure facilities the government of karnataka has been implementing a program called a processing and value addition for horticulture crops it includes activities related to grape dehydration 
red chili powdering vanilla processing wine making unit and desiccated coconut powder unit since horticulture produces like Uh, fruits vegetables and flowers are perishable it is very important to provide a proper post harvest management practices for these produce karnataka has 82 cold storages most of which are in private few are in cooperative sector and also in public sector to make the existing storage facilities economical and to encourage establishment of new cold storages the government gives a electricity subsidy of rupees 1000 per unit uh, of electricity consumed by the cold storage units now this table gives a progress of activities for the post harvest uh, management over the period uh, from 2007 and it to 2013 14 it is in terms of uh, processing units and the also in terms of the amount of uh, financial support that is been given the target from 2007 to 8 has increased uh, to 20 it was 13 to 20 but the main achievements took place main high targets and also achievements took place in 2008 and 9 and after that from 2008 9 onwards the targets have been surprisingly lowered the reasons are not known but the main progress has happened in 2008 and 9 then there is a marketing area at the district level 19 horticulture produce marketing and cooperative societies have been established on the lines of hopcoms in bangalore at present these district hopcoms are unable to work under profit because of lack of infrastructure and basic amenities in this regard a project of strengthening of district hopcoms through karnataka is being set up and the Horticulture Federation has been approved under Rashtriya Krushi Vikas Yojana for exclusively for this purpose. Now, lastly, providing infrastructure facilities and the in. 2012 and 13 the state sector scheme of procurement of fruits and vegetables has been implemented that was to create infrastructure facilities for the collection of fruits and vegetables there were also miscellaneous activities undertaken by the department of horticulture in this area and it was the formation of karnataka state horticulture development agency and also the development of horticulture through ppp framework that is public private partnership model the state government in order to make these farms and the nurseries self sustainable and profit making resource center was established a special purpose vehicle for development of these farms has been the main objective to produce a high quality horticultural seed and planting materials and to build and operate crop development there are resource centers for holistic development of horticulture sector as well as for building horticulture related infrastructure facilities there are the biotechnology center of the department of horticulture is taking up activities like germplasm conservation tissue culture mushroom development production of bio fertilizer bio pesticides soil water and leaf analysis dna fingerprinting etc in 2013 14 tissue culture plants were produced by utilizing bio fertilizers and bio control agents and vermi composting these were produced under the scheme of development of departmental laboratories training programs and demonstrations were arranged at this center to promote cultivation and consumption of mushrooms further the department also has created awareness of organic farming use of medicinal plants kitchen garden etc now let us take a look at the new interventions in horticulture that have been initiated by the department of horticulture there is a productivity improvement in coconut that is for improving the production of coconuts and its productivity then there is a rejuvenation of areca nut gardens which have been affected with the yellow leaf disease the program has been uh, undertaken to improve the the economic conditions of the farmers who are facing the loss due to yellow leaf disease the yield of 
the arachnids gets affected very badly because of the yellow leaf disease and it can be dealt by proper soil and nutrient management and there are incentives for floriculture that are being given for the survival of the high tech floriculture many organizations the department of horticulture has formulated a new scheme for the rejuvenation and strengthening of this high tech floriculture the many programs have been undertaken in this scheme and they are subsidy for re- replanting the old plants then there is a subsidy for replacement of polythene sheets of the greenhouse there is a subsidy for electricity used for the cold storages of high tech floriculture units then there is a also schemes for the apiculture development programs apiculture is basically bee maintenance program the department of horticulture is implementing various programs for beekeeping development under the state sector and the district sector the national horticulture mission and rashi krishi vikas yojana schemes have also supported this program these programs are implemented with the objective of increasing the quality yield in horticulture and agriculture crops and also to produce disease free quality bee colonies it also encourages the farmers to take up beekeeping in a more intensive manner then there are madhu melas that is festivals and field days and seminars that are conducted so that there is a dissemination of information on bee keeping special programs are also drawn for the welfare of the tribals and adivasis who are engaged in the bee keeping activities the department also strives to create awareness in the bee keeping overall training further training is also given regarding the harvesting of wild honey as well as bee keeping in boxes in a systematic manner the honey processing unit established by the tribal or the adivasi societies now are eligible for a special financial assistance we now come to karnataka watershed development project that is sujala 3 which actively supports many of the horticulture development programs this project is basically financed by the world bank and the government of karnataka also participates in the ratio of 70 to 30 that is 70 is from the world bank and 30 is from the state and the various activities that are conducted are demonstration of annuals and perennial crops new nutrition garden demonstration establishment of soil water and leaf analysis laboratory for identification of soil problems and for suitable recommendations then there is establishment of post harvest infrastructures and improving the market linkage facilities then there is a training to farmers now we come to the end of the essay we summarize the key points to remember in this essay they are the horticulture sector has registered a fairly good growth both in the karnataka and the state government has undertaken several initiatives to boost the growth in this sector national horticulture mission is playing a vital role it enhances both production and productivity of major horticulture crops and doubling the production it also aims to increase the quality of the produce the rejuvenation of the unproductive orchards rainwater harvesting organic farming etc there is a oil palm development program which is jointly sponsored by the government of india and the government of karnataka and and the ratio of 75 to 25% that is 75% from the central government and the 25% from the state government under this program there are schemes to establish a plantations uh, wherein farmers are given input subsidies for an initial period of 4 years and they are also supplied the planting materials there is a coconut development board which provides 100% financial assistance for the integrated development of coconut industry in the state the department of horticulture also has been promoting the use of drip irrigation system among horticulture farms that, that is since 1991 to 92 there are many newly developed technologies and improved hybrid varieties of high yielding potential crops and they are disseminated to farmers through various media so that it enables them to adopt 
and get a better returns. There are 10 horticulture training centers in the state which are working since 1950 and they give a training to horticulture farmers. 10 months of practical training programs are being conducted to the farmers and their children with the modern technologies. The Department of Horticulture through its plant protection programs provides a biopesticides, botanicals, chemicals, pheromone traps and lures so that the pests are controlled and the diseases of horticulture crops are prevented. There is also a program called a processing and value addition for horticulture crops. It includes activities related to grape dehydration, red chili powdering, vanilla processing, winemaking units and desiccated coconut powder units. The Department of Horticulture has formulated a new schemes for the rejuvenation and strengthening of high-tech floriculture in 2013 and 14. Further, the department is also implementing various programs for beekeeping development under the state sector, district sector, and national horticulture mission and Rashtriya Krishi Vikasa Yojana schemes also participate and support this program.